Hello, pilgrims. It's Wednesday, January 31st, and we are coming to you from Santiago de Compostela and, well, all along the Camino routes. I'm Lee Brennan, and Johnny Walker will join us shortly. Well, let's get to it. Love is in the air. We are thrilled to hear that the owners of Casa Susie, Susie and Fermin, just announced their engagement. Love truly does happen on the Camino. They met when Fermin was guest number 30 at Casa Susie, and since then, they have been taking care of and spoiling pilgrims from all over the world. Congratulations to Susie and Fermin. We love you both. So what's happening in Santiago today? Well, it is a gorgeous day here, especially for the last day of January. While out and about in the city today, we met this wonderful group of pilgrims from New Brunswick, Canada. They had just arrived after walking from Porto, and boy, were they excited. And then we met a local, Darios, who was out pursuing his hobby of taking pilgrim photographs. The portraits he took today were absolutely stunning. Then we met up with Matthijs, and Matthijs from the Netherlands was on his way to walk his very first Camino on the Primitivo starting in Oviedo. We hope to hear more from him once he finishes. Lastly, Mardi Gras starts February 8th, and as I speak, workers are busy hanging lights around the city to enhance the festive vibe for Carnival. Now let's check in with our esteemed co-host, the one, the only, Johnny Walker. Johnny, what's up this week? Thanks, Lee. Hello, everyone. Here in Santiago, as you can see, it's slightly overcast. It's pretty chilly in the mornings. That's why I'm well wrapped up. As you can see from this forecast, it's wonderful walking weather. And over the next few days, there it might be cloudy, but the sun will pop out from time to time, slightly chilly. I think there's nothing quite like walking early in the morning, a crisp, cold morning, and you heat yourself up uh, to walking often to take off a layer mid-morning and here in Santiago by midday by one o'clock early afternoon it's much warmer and then cool again in the evening a brilliant walking weather as I've said at this time of the year at the end of the first month of the year at the end of January often we turn our minds to what the numbers are going to be like this year people are prone to make predictions I tend not to make predictions but in the last week some 700 pilgrims have arrived here in Santiago and therefore, in the first month of the year of 2024, 2,072 pilgrims have arrived. Is that less or more, you ask yourself, than last year? Last year was a record-breaking year. Well, it's slightly more, because in January 2023, 1,925 pilgrims arrived. So we'll see whether the graph keeps going up and going up, and other records will be broken, but we don't know that yet. Last week, I made available to you freely uh, my pilgrim guide to Santiago called Room for Everyone. And I believe here in Santiago, there is room for everyone. S many people wrote to me, and I'm happy to send you details and to, to give you a link to download the guide. Um, and it's also available from, I gave it for nothing, to the Pilgrim Associations, American Pilgrims on the Camino, um, Canadian Company of Pilgrims, the South African Confraternity, the Australian, the Australian Association of Pilgrims, and so forth. So you can get this guide freely from your local country association. Also, at the beginning of the year, I'm aware, like me, that many people start to think about preparing for the first Camino or the next Camino. So I wrote another guide. Um, and knowing that many people think first of the Camino Frances, I wrote a guide called Preparing for the Camino Frances, although this guide has lots of information that's, that's applicable to all other, all other pilgrim routes. So it's got what's the terrain like, what equipment might you need, how you prepare physically, how you prepare spiritually, what you do in case of emergency, how, you, how, how, do you, how does the money work in Spain, where are banks available and so forth. So as you can see, it's a comprehensive table of contents. And you can download this in the Camino de Santiago All Roots group on Facebook. Just press the feature button and it's there for you to download. And if you can't do that because you don't use Facebook, then just get in touch with me at Johnny Walker, hyphen Santiago at hotmail.com and I'll be very happy to send you a copy. 
when it's cold like this, we often think of our warmest Camino memories. And I'm sure those of you who have walked the Camino, like me, have many Camino memories. And I just want to go back, take you back in this cold morning to me walking the Camino Portuguese by the coast. It was a blistering hot day. I was sweating. The sun was beating down. And I came to a beach, the Playa America. And it stretches out for four kilometres before you. That's a one hour's walking. And there was only one thing I could do, which was to take off my boots and my socks and paddle along in the water for a glorious hour's walking um, on the Playa America. And I'm sure you will have happy memories of your Caminos, so please share them with us. And if you haven't walked yet, then I'm certain when you do, you will have happy memories too. All the best, folks. See you next week. Thanks, Johnny. Now to Pilgrims Out on the Camino. Lindsay Teixeney reported in saying he is doing just fantastic. He's on stage 15 today of the Via de la Plata. He is finding lots of muddy sections and his shoes are getting wet almost daily. He suggests that maybe consider walking and hiking sandals if you plan to walk this time of year as there isn't enough sun hours in the day to dry the ground. He says, though, temperatures have been so pleasant for walking. Next up is our Camino News Update correspondent, Rocco Rossi, with this week's report from the Via de la Plata. Thanks, Lee. One week in, almost 200 kilometers walked, four pilgrims sighted, five if you include the dog that was walking with two of them, and I've got a top five list for you. Why five? Well, I've only been here a week. Give me a break. Number one, La Plata. It's got nothing to do with silver. It's actually a Latinization of an Arabic term, al-balat, which meant cobblestone paved roads or Roman engineered roads, which is how the Moors referred to them. Number two, a thousand kilometers with long stages in between towns. Get ready to put the me into Camino. You've got tons of time and space to have those deep conversations with yourself and the divine and deal with all the baggage that all of us carry around. Number three, did I mention it's a thousand kilometers with long stages in between towns? You can go 20, 25 kilometers between a source of drinking water. So plan accordingly, particularly as the temperatures increase through the year. Number four, it's a dog's world. We're just walking through it. The dog's there to protect the farmer's livelihood. And they're going to stay chill as long as you keep your distance and don't guide to get, don't try to get too close for that super cute lamb and mama sheep shot. Number five, all of this talk of La Plata being flata. Mm -mm. There are definitely stages where you're going to be climbing, particularly into Almaden and Monasterio. El Calvario going into Almaden is right at the end of almost 30 kilometers of walking these steep switchbacks and then a rocky descent into the town. Don't be fooled, get ready. Did you like what you hear? Of course you did. You're curious pilgrims, you wanna know more. Come back next week. If you need a daily hit, follow me, Rocco Rossi TO on Instagram, Buen Camino. Thanks Rocco. Now, an update to last week's story about the Great Choro Search. It has successfully come to a close as our team, here we are, Donnie, Trisha, and myself. We found the best churros in Santiago this past Saturday, on a tip from Donnie, actually. Santiago residents Moncho and his wife recently opened Chore, their first churro shop. It's located on the street that divides Newtown and Old Town, just between Plaza Galicia and Alameda Park. Moncho says his secret is using only freshly made dough. The churros were crispy on the outside, fluffy in the inside, and they were served warm. They have a well-stocked topping bar to customize your orders. And my favorite was the churro rolled in cinnamon sugar and then dipped in white chocolate. It was to die for. Don't miss this place the next time you're in Santiago. This week on the Camino Cafe podcast, I spoke with Dan Mullins about his journey of recovering his singing voice after a terrible virus. We ended the talk with Dan performing a world premiere of a new song that will be on his new album, Storyteller. Well, from all of us here at Camino News Update, that's it for this week. See you in Santiago, pilgrims. <laughs>